Over the past three sets, Konami has introduced a new rarity into the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game. These are now known as Starlight Rares. They were originally known as Prismatic Rares. Before that, we didn't really have a name for them, but these are things that are extremely, extremely difficult to pull. You will only pull one Starlight Rare out of every 24 boxes. That's two cases worth of boxes, and you have a one in four chance of pulling the one you want. Now, this is going to change with the next set. There'll actually be five Starlight Rares per sort of a set release, which is going to be pretty exciting. But for now, we only have 12 Starlight Rares in all of the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game. In today's video, I want to go over what I feel the top five best Starlight Rare choices are. And this is going to go off of a couple different criteria. It's not just going to be how expensive they are. I mean, these are very, very expensive cards. Some of the choices have been kind of weird. I won't really talk about those in this video, but I just want to go over my favorite Starlight Rares and the cards that I feel have made the biggest impact on the TCG in terms of tournaments and also the cards that I feel people are most excited to pull. I would like to mention before we get to the list that Starlight Rares, you know, they're not for everyone. They are very, very expensive. And I know I have quite a few budget players watching my videos and you might say, well, who would ever spend more money for the shinier version of a card that's already in the set? The thing is, is that everyone has different levels of uh, sort of investments in Yu-Gi-Oh and some players really want to collect these cards or some players really want to play them in their decks and their budgets might not be the same as yours. There will always be players with high budgets that want to bling out their deck as much as possible, and for those players, Starlight Rares are a really cool thing. Just in general though, I think especially because the last three core sets, all of them that have these Starlight Rares, have been pretty weak. I think having these sort of chase cards in them that you might pull, I mean very very unlikely to pull, but you might sometimes get. The fact that Starlight Rares are already lower rarity cards in this set, I think is a fantastic idea. You don't have any must have card that only comes as a Starlight Rare, so it's just a cool sort of chase card to have in the recent sets. At number five, we probably have my only true controversial choice, and that is Salmon Great Pyro Phoenix. Now, I realize this is not one of the more expensive Starlight Rare. It's actually less than $100, so quite a lot less expensive than some of the better ones that I'm going to talk about in today's video, but I thought this was an excellent choice. You know, it's a card you want to play two of in a Salamangrate Great deck if you are choosing to play it, and it has some pretty useful effects. So if this card is a Link Summon using a Salmon Great Pyro Phoenix, which is like the entire mechanic of Salmon Grates, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. So what a fantastic bonus ability, just wiping the entire board. And then also it has two other effects. First off, you can target one Link Monster in your opponent's graveyard, special summon it to your opponent's field, which might seem weird, except the second effect says, if a Link Monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, you can target one of those monsters, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. So this card actually has seen competitive success it's not a staple choice by any means, but it is really, really solid and has topped several tournaments. The main combo here is that you summon the first one and then summon the second one, blow up your opponent's board, do a bunch of damage by attacking directly because now they have no monster cards, and then in main phase two, you can revive a link monster that they might have had on the field and then inflict a bunch of damage to them, hopefully closing out the game. This card actually was a huge sleeper pick for several Salmon Great players, and like I said, it's not a staple card, but still a very good card in that strategy, and it's a really cool choice, in my opinion, for a Starlight Rare. At number four, we have a pair of monsters, the two Charmer cards that were printed in Starlight Rare. And I do want to say that while these cards are very cool and some of the ones that people really want to pull, you know, the Charmers have a huge fan base and they're really exciting. I really, really wish that Hida would have been printed when Starlight Rares were happening because it would have been a perfect choice. Hida is by far the most competitive, most used Charmer Link 2 monster, at least so far. So it would have been really cool. But at least we have the wind one as well as the earth one and I would not be surprised even a little bit if the water link to charmer monster that's coming out in eternity code was also a starlight rare these seem to be really really popular with fans not even just fans of charmers but just in general they are some of the more valuable ones yes but I think that goes to show just how much people love the charmer monsters those cards have been retrained and re-released so many different times but these link two monsters are really really well design and are some of the best uses for Charmer fans if they actually want to play them in competitive decks. Overall, I really hope to see that Water Monster printed as a Starlight Rare in the future. I'm pretty sure it will be. And these Link Monsters likely will still be played in Master Rule 5 if I had to take a guess. Especially, I mean, we've seen Hida being played so often. I think the main thing holding back the Wind one and the Earth one is that there might not be a deck right now that plays a lot of Earth and Wind monsters that really wants 
a card like that. But look out for these cards in the future. They might go up in value if they start being competitively played as much as Hida especially. And these are some of my favorite choices for Starlight Rares. And number three, we have the best card just in general out of Ignition Assault, but also one of the best Starlight Rares ever released, Lightning Storm. This card is likely going to be iconic for years to come. And because it was a secret rare, it would have been pretty hard to give it a rarity increase. Pretty much the only way would have been an OTS Ultimate Rare, which we've seen done in the past with cards like Pot of Desires, which used to be a Chase Secret Rare and is now an Ultimate Rare, but it would have taken a while. You know, that reprint probably wouldn't have come for at least a year from now. So by printing this card as a Starlight Rare and a Secret Rare, you give some of the most high budget players out there a way to increase the rarity of this card that's already pretty hard to find. This card is really, really good. It'll likely be played for a long, long time. And I think that is one of the reasons I think is such a great choice for a Starlight Rare. No, it is not at the very, very top of my list, but it is still one of the best cards printed in this rarity. And to be completely honest, the top three Starlight Rares that I'm going to mention in today's video are all basically on the same level in terms of people being excited to pull them and people actually wanting to play them in their decks. So just because this card is at third place does not mean it's a bad choice or a bad Starlight Rare. It is still really, really good. If anything, the top three on this list are all pretty much on the same level. So don't take it personally if you really want a Lightning Storm at the first place spot. Okay, so you guys can probably already guess what the number one and number two spots are, but let's still talk about them. So the number two spot on my list is going to be IP Mascarena. This card is so popular. It's also on a regional qualifier mat, and it's just a really great card from Chaos Impact. By far the best card from that entire set. You're kind of going to notice a trend here with these last three choices. All three of them are by far the best cards, even ignoring the Starlight Rarity from their respective sets. This is the best card out of Chaos Impact. This card sees play in almost every single type of deck. Your meta strategies, your rogue strategies, even some casual strategies really like IP Mascarena. IP Mascarena has a really cool effect. It's basically like Formula Synchron for Link Monsters, and it's super, super valuable in a lot of different decks. There are a lot of different cards that you can summon with this that are super impactful. Things like Zero Boros and Nightmare Unicorn were pretty popular, but also just like any Link 3 or Link 4 monster is really, really good to summon with this card. We've seen pretty much in every single deck that plays at least one Link 4 monster and has extra deck space, they'll play one copy of IP Mascarena because not only is this card useful for Link Summoning on the opponent's turn, even if you use this card without using its effect just as a regular Link 2 for Link material for a bigger monster, you will always give the monster that you summon with this thing protection from being destroyed by your opponent's card's effects. That makes some already really good monsters even harder to deal with, and that's one of the reasons why this is one of the best Starlight Rares, in my opinion, the second best Starlight Rare ever released. Before we get to my number one choice, which you guys have probably already guessed by now because we've eliminated all the other options, I want to give an honorable mention to Sky Striker Ace Rose, a card I expect to get more than a couple comments about in the comment section of this video. So why do I not feel like this was one of the top five Stellar Rares? And I feel like I'll get a lot of comments specifically about why Pyro Phoenix made it over this card. And yes, I know this is one of the more expensive Stellar Rares, but I think it has more to do with that this is just a fan favorite archetype. I mean, yes, Sky Strikers is an archetype that a lot of people hated, but a lot of people played it. And I feel like that's one of the reasons this is one of the more expensive Stellar Rares. However, this card was released right after, like a week after Engage was banned officially, which means that like this didn't get any competitive use. I mean, yeah, people were trying to play Sky Strikers after Engage got banned. I think it even got a couple regional tops, but mostly that deck is just completely dead and this thing did not save it. Overall, Ray would have been a much cooler Starlight Rare, although I obviously understand the logistics of that just don't line up. It wasn't released in a core set. It was released before Starlight Rares came out, so that's never going to happen. But Rose is not Ray. It's not nearly as powerful. It's not nearly as iconic. So while I do feel this card is expensive because people still latch on to Sky Striker cards and they like the archetype a lot, this to me at least is just a really weird choice, especially given the timing of it right after Engage got banned, making the deck that it goes in not very good. And number one, it has to be Appalooza Bow of the Goddess. I really doubt this surprises anyone. It is by far the most expensive Stellar Rare, the most sought after Stellar Rare, sitting at $600 a piece. And it is also one of the very first ones released in Rising Rampage, and boy did it really kick off the rarity with a huge bang. This was already the chase card 
of Rising Rampage, by far the best card from that set. And then adding a super difficult to pull, super expensive version of that same card, I mean, of course you're going to have collectors drooling over the release because it's just such an iconic card for the last couple sets. Great artwork, really cool effect, really competitive card. It has to be the number one choice for Starlet Rares so far. When people are thinking of what makes a Starlet Rare so good, what choice is the best choice, people either always go to IP Mascarena or Appalooza. They're both honestly the best Starlet Rares by a long shot, which is why they're so much more expensive than the other ones out there. Even Lightning Storm isn't quite at their price level, and it's just like, this is the most recognizable, most iconic Starlet Rares so far. It has to be number one on my list. Anyway though, hope you guys enjoyed today's discussion video on the top five Starlet Rares so far. I cannot wait until we see the Eternity Code Starlet Rares. They're going to be really, really cool, especially because now they're going to have five Starlet Rares per set instead of just the usual four that we've gotten so far. Anyway though, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Goodbye.